Today we're talking about MRIs and when you might need it for low back pain. We're also going to be talking about how it kind of stacks up as a diagnosis tool, but also when you actually might not want to get one and when it might actually be detrimental to have one and can lead to worse outcomes sometimes. And then we're going to get into when you do want to get one and the things to kind of look out for for that as well. If you do like this format, then please let us know and we'll be covering other areas, other body parts with other imaging techniques as well. So, and what do we tend to find are the problems with using MRIs for diagnosis with certain back pain conditions? So yeah, I think there's a lot of problems with, I think, imaging. I think the main one we tend to notice is people want a scan to identify a painful source when really this is not the case majority of the time. I mean, as we know, pain is a very multifactorial, complex phenomenon, just meaning that it's influenced by multiple things and multiple factors, such as stress, sleep, diet, or even lack of exercise. So I think the reason is, why, why can't we predict pain on an MRI scan? So this is because MRI findings such as disc bulges, arthritis, stenosis, um, disc degeneration, are actually found in people with no pain. And really, this is all just part of the aging process. So when we talk about people getting older, we get gray hairs, wrinkles, etc. Our joints, our back, changes like these things just happen generally as we, as we get older. So there was a study done by Brunjiki uh, in 2015, where they had a look at a study where they identified over 3,000 people uh, with no back pain or asymptomatic people um, and they MRI these people's backs and these multiple findings were found on these people. So I think the big takeaway from this uh, is that it's important to remember that you are not your MRI and just because there is certain findings on this MRI it doesn't mean that it's causing your pain and it cannot identify the level of pain you're in just by looking at these changes on your MRI scan. I need your opinion about something. Tell me intrigued Bob. I am considering offering full body scans here at Sacred Heart. What do you think? I think showing perfectly healthy people every harmless imperfection in their body just to scare them into taking invasive and often pointless tests is an unholy sin. Does sound a little sketchy ethically, doesn't it? Thanks, Perry. Did that just happen? So overall, what we need to do is look at things as a holistic approach rather than focusing solely on scan findings. And also, I think we can find that actually getting a scan can lead to negative outcomes. Have you ever found that, Rob? Yes, that's a really good point. And knowing this, it means that actually getting a scan can sometimes be, be a negative thing and something we don't want and can lead to worse outcomes. The reason for this could be because people who have back pain for longer end up getting MRI scans and it's because they have worse back pain that they then get MRI scans. Or it could be that getting the MRI scan and getting all the information delivered to you about what's on that MRI can actually have quite negative effects on individuals. A lot of it comes down to the language that's used. So if you're getting an MRI report and it's telling you degeneration this on L that, that's going to be quite a scary thing to be hearing. And we know for low back pain, the best thing is to keep active and keep moving. But if you're hearing these words, you're probably then going to be less likely to want to move, which can then lead to what we call like a kinesiophobia, which is a fear of movement, which is then going to lead to worse outcomes and prolonged back pain. A study by Roger Karanatal in 2021 actually showed that the language which is used for MRI scans has that negative effect. So if we said, for example, disc degeneration and all these things, given the image that the spine is potentially crumbling, this is what some people come and tell us that they've been told their spine's crumbling, it actually then has those negative effects. Whereas if we said something like it's just age related changes, this is quite normal, as we saw before in that chart, then that is much less worrying. People are more likely to stay active and recover from the back pain a lot quicker. There was once a story I heard of someone who had an MRI and obviously things were seen on there because they were over a certain age, so it was more likely to be anyway. They ended up going through loads of therapies, they ended up having surgery on the back, but the pain was still there. And it turned out it was actually due to the prostate that they were getting the pain in the back. So we're looking at the MRI, we're, we're focusing on, in on these things that are found on there, but it's not really the cause of pain. We will go into the causes of pain and why things hurt in other videos, 
but it's a really good explanation for why we don't want to be relying on those MRIs. However, there are times when MRIs are warranted, isn't there, Mark? So there's certain things that we are going to want to see it for. What do we tend to find it works best for? So yes, Rob, well, um, sometimes we do need a, an image, and um, these instances are quite rare. Um, I'll try to cover uh, most common ones uh, today. So one of the instances that we need an image is uh, when we suspect a fracture. Uh, now, the spine is really robust and strong structure. So for that to occur, you need to either be involved in a significant road traffic accident or perhaps suffer from a condition called osteoporosis, when your bones are a bit more brittle and sustain a fall. Now, a spinal fracture presents um, with a localized spine, spinal tenderness um, and also the pain gets worse when you're weight-bearing, when you're standing, for example. Um, another medical emergency that uh, requires imaging is a cord equina syndrome. Now, that is a spinal cord compression um, in the lumbar spine and typically presents with uh, sciatica and both of your legs. Um, can also um, cause bowel and bladder changes, so uh, it could be, let's say, incontinence or unable to pass urine, what we call retention. Um, and there could be um, some changes in your power uh, in your legs and also sensation in your legs. Um, so when we suspect Podaquana syndrome, we tend to um, send these people to the hospital to get imaging as quickly as possible. Uh, so moving down the list, another condition that requires imaging is infection. Um, again, this is very rare um, and typically uh, people that have um, a spinal infection are immunocompromised, so they either are on strong uh, chemo medication or they have an HIV infection or um, also sort of have history of TB, tuberculosis or a recent UTI, urinary tract infection. Very rarely but sometimes we need imaging when um, we suspect a significant nerve root problem in lumbar spine. So this typically presents with uh, leg and back pain but the leg pain tends to be more painful than the back. Sometimes there is associated leg weakness or some sensory changes in the leg as well. When uh, there is no improvement with physiotherapy and uh, medication, for example, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication and uh, neuropathic tablets, then, and when we think that the image will lead to some sort of procedure, for example, a, a spinal injection or a surgery, then we might need an image. And imaging also required when we think that the person might have a cancer. Um, this typically presents with a severe unremitting pain, generally feeling unwell, um, weight loss and night sweats. So they're really good points we want to take on board as well of when to get one. But I think the main point to take away is you don't want to be relying on MRI scans to get answers of why things are hurting or in pain and not rushing to get an MRI straight away. Um, when other things can help and it's not all the time necessary or needed. I hope you liked this format of video and if you did then obviously please give us a like, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you know when others are coming out. We are going to be doing other series, this is more of a low back one involving kind of deadlifts, alternatives to deadlifts and variations and you can check those videos out as well um, and we're going to be covering pretty much all body parts so make sure you come back and check us out. We'll see you on the next video.